Hi teachers, welcome to the Teacher's Playbook. My name is Melanie Howe, and although I have been teaching for a while, the last 15 minutes of the day, that packing up to go home time just plagues me. I started this channel because I was hoping that by getting a glimpse into my teaching world, it would allow other teachers to come up with ideas of their own or, quite frankly, just avoid some of the mistakes that I've made. In this particular video, this particular case, my end of the day routine has gotten a little sloppy and it's time to tighten things up. If you find this video helpful, I hope you will consider subscribing. To understand my current routine for packing up, you kind of have to understand what my school world is like. And that is, my school requires the kids to fill out a homework planner. We have been ordering this planner for years now. It's by a company called Design for Success Incorporated. And it's been successful, I must say, to have the kids write the date at the top which is a good thing because then we have extra books and we can reuse them next year. So that's always good. There's an area for um, the different subjects and they just write down what homework they might have in the extra subjects. And then there are two blank spaces here at the bottom where kids can write notes to themselves like tomorrow's a t-shirt day or don't forget to bring such and such from home, whatever the case may be. So my packing up routine basically comes down to making sure kids fill this out and then making sure they actually pack the books that they need to go into their backpacks so that they can get home. Because from a, from a parent's point of view, there's nothing more frustrating than to have your child bring home the planner and they know what they need to do, but they have forgotten the books that they need to be able to complete the assignments. That means I have two responsibilities, filling out the planner and making sure the books get home. And there is where my struggle begins because my kids are in the fifth grade and they need to be more independent. This can't be a, I look at each individual child and say, do you have your vocabulary book? Do you have your science book or whatever? And because sometimes they look right at you and say yes, and they honestly believe that they do, but it's not in the backpack yet. But a packing up routine has a lot of variables. It can depend on the size of your class. It can depend on the general makeup of your class. That means that basically what works one year with one group might not be the best strategy for the next year with another group. Sometimes groups need more intervention than other groups do and some groups just take off and do things more independently. You kind of have to feel that out. Other variables would be the teacher's tolerance for chaos. You know, I mean, does it bother you that all kids are moving around the room and packing at the same time or do you need more control and only have smaller groups packing um, one group at a time? Another variable can be the parent expectations because if you have, you know, some of your kids who are chronic, I forgot my book, I forgot my book, the parents really want you to double check behind those kids. What's my strategy going to be to reclaim the last 15 minutes of the day and have it be a calmer time of day? Quite frankly, I need to go back to small groups packing one at a time. Um, I consider myself someone who has a pretty high tolerance for chaos in the classroom. You know, it doesn't bother me that they're all moving um, as long as they're on task. It doesn't bother me that they can chit chat as long as they chit chat while they're packing. You know, that they, they, sometimes they get so engrossed in what they're saying, they stop moving and they lose time. So these are things I have to pay attention to. And what's, what's happening is my chit-chatters are taking control and they're sort of slowing down the ones that need more focus as they pack. And so I'm going to have to go back to smaller groups so that I have more control over the packing up process. Now, I have done this in the past where I had everybody pack and then I went around and looked in book bags to make sure everybody had the right books in their book bags. And that was successful and the kids learned, you know, independently to write things down. 
and that was fine. But the group I have this year, they need me to look at their planners and in their book bags. They're just not quite responsible enough to make the connection between, oh, I have these three questions in science I have to answer tonight, and they write it in their uh, homework notebook, but then they don't pack the science book. So I've got to make sure both things happen. And that's how I plan to take control over my last 15 minutes. But you know what the catch is? The catch is I can't do it in 15 minutes. You know, now I'm going to have to dedicate more time to getting everyone packed up at the end of the day. And that's the part that kind of rubs me the wrong way because I want them to have more time for learning, but obviously they're not ready for that. They, they need me to help them with executive functioning skills of the what do I, I have to plan ahead for I'm trying to see my picture of myself working at home and what am I going to need to be able to accomplish these tasks. And I know, by the way, that there are people out there thinking, well, if you didn't have homework, you wouldn't have that problem. But I teach in a school, in a school where homework is an expectation. They see homework as building habits, building habits for you can't always accomplish everything during your workday, and sometimes you have to take things home. No new concepts are done for homework, I will say that. But it's expected. Homework is expected because they want younger kids to build these habits. And another reason I need to take this process so seriously is because, again, I'm in fifth grade. And next year, these kids are going to be standing in front of a locker at 3 o'clock and expected to remember what they need to put into a book bag and take home from their first period, second period class. And if we don't train them to use the planners all day a little bit throughout the day you know that middle school is going to be quite a shock so another trade-off for this will be while I'm having small groups packed to go home what are the other kids going to do you know you can do independent reading maybe they need to work on um, a learning website. Maybe they need to do an IXL or one of the sites that we use here at our school. Um, now, there are always a few kids in every class who are so determined not to have homework that they will work up until the last minute. They're not the majority, but there are, are a few that are like that, and they don't want to be called to pack up because they want to work until the last minute. So this also affects my seating chart and how I'm going to effectively call groups. I've done this in the past where I just drew sticks, drew popsicle sticks for random people to go pack, but then I find myself trying to dart from one side of the room from one group to the next, making sure everybody's filled out their planner and packed their book bag. So I need to think about new groups as I think about this new plan for dismissal. Who knew so much thought could go into get your stuff in your book bag and go home. Yeah. So that's my plan. I'm going to make my group sizes smaller so that I have more control over my end of the day routine. If you have any other ideas, please leave them in the comments. I could really use some help, quite frankly. Yeah, so there's that. And I've been doing this, like I said, for a while. I'll keep you posted on how this smaller group strategy of mine works in the coming weeks. But if you found this video helpful, I hope you will consider subscribing. I hope everyone has a great uh, Thanksgiving holiday if you're here in the U.S.